Good morning. Welcome to our last 9:30 service for a little while. Uh, oh, well, no, that's a reminder that next next week come at the right time. Okay. I'm not going to say what time it is. We'll see that later. I'll mess it up. But uh, welcome, uh, welcome to this 9:30 service here at Medford UMC. If you're visiting with us, this is just like regular church. There's lots of seats up front, so um, get your coffee and you know come on up and uh, sit down. Yeah, I know. Well, Laura laughed, so that's good. Um, <laughs> we're going to start off with a time of singing, and we're going to start off with Everlasting God. Nine thirty. Mm. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord.
singing out with blessed assurance, straight from the hymn. <laughs> our comment singing here with Amazing Grace. That's how Craig likes it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you get your chance to share the sign of peace in the middle there. We'll give you your cue, but uh, Amazing Grace. Let's sing it.
good morning, everyone. Morning. Welcome to Medford United Methodist Church. It's good to have you with us. My name is Joe Monahan. I want to welcome you on behalf of myself and also our associate pastor, Kathleen Stoltz. Kathleen is actually uh, with uh, our Sunday school. They're having uh, some of their uh, end of year stuff that's happening in the sanctuary right now. So that's where she is at the moment. Uh, I want to say a special word of those uh, to of welcome to those who may be visiting with us today. We uh, thank you for being here. Uh, we have a really special day in worship today, and 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 that's because um, one of our young people, uh, Paul Barnett, who has spent the last year at the Boston University School of Theology, uh, studying uh, theology because that's what you <laughs> study is School of Theology. <laughs> he is, um, well, yeah. As I st as I started the phrase, I realized I'd boxed myself in. I didn't know what else to do. So he's uh, here, and he's going to be preaching this morning. We're really uh, happy to have him with us and uh, happy to have his family with us as well. Uh, Debbie Barnett is his mom. Debbie grew up in this church, and uh, now she serves uh, um, two churches, three churches right now, although she's kind of done with those churches <laughs> and um, is moving to a new congregation as of July 1st. So she's going to be the pastor at the Westmont United Methodist Church couple of announcements. Um, first of all, before I go to the announcements, a couple, there's uh, going to be a red attendance pad. It's going to circulate through when it comes by. I hope that you'll sign and share with us that you've been here. And especially if you're visiting with us, if you'd be willing to share with us your name and address information, we'd love to be able to let you know about things that are going on at, at the church. So I hope that you'll give us that opportunity. Um, I seem to have left my announcements in the other room, so I'm going to try to do remember everything that I wanted to say. So um, the first thing is, I want to thank everyone who participated in the uh, diaper drive. And next week, um, Leslie will be uh, taking all those things to the Christian Caring Center where they've uh, been uh, collected. And uh, next week, we'll report on just how many we collected and see how we did compared to last year. Really a wonderful thing, because this is a really expensive item that is not something that people can pay uh, with their food stamps for. And uh, so if you have a young family, that's something that is really important. So be able to have this is a great thing. Uh, the second thing I'd say is next weekend, we're going to start our new worship schedule for the summer that takes us through uh, Labor Day weekend. And that is this service will go from 930 to 9 o'clock. OK, so we're going to start half hour earlier. And then the traditional service will be starting at 1030. So it's also going to be starting half hour earlier. So uh, we'd love to have you and uh, continue to come and worship with us throughout the summer. And then I think the last thing is I want to invite Sharon uh, to come forward. Um, Sharon Payne is part of our uh, capital campaign, what we call the Connections Team, which is kind of the ongoing work of that campaign. She's going to talk a little bit about the success that we've had. Let me get this out of your way. Thank you. Good morning and happy Father's Day. Okay. We'd like to take this opportunity Sorry. to express our sincere gratitude and heartfelt thanks to you for your sacrifice and generosity to the Growing Together in Faith Capital campaign. I'm very happy to share with you to date that we've received pledges from 161 families for a total of $963,520. This represents 96.4% of our goal of $1 million. Yeah. Of the pleasures that have been made, we have actually received $140,415, or 14% of the total pledged. We are getting closer to our goal, and we're still quite optimistic that we can get there. The Family Life Center has been in the works for quite a while, and it's very exciting to see that the work is, is actually begun. Over the summer months, we expect to see even more activity as we relocate the playground and we actually begin construction on the building. And all this is possible thanks to your generosity. Next Sunday, we will begin our summer worship schedule. We would like to stress how important it is that we don't let our offerings take a vacation. It's so important to continue with our offering toward fulfilling our commitments, but also with our offerings to the general fund as well so that we can stay on track. And if you're still considering making a commitment or a one-time gift, it's not too late. Commitment cards are always available in the pew racks in the sanctuary. And should you ever have any questions, please feel free to contact one of the members of the connection team. Our contact information will always be listed in the messenger. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. That's great news. 
All right. So uh, as we move into this time, um, let's take a minute and uh, let's do the question of the week. So this is Paul's question for you. And uh, what's the church to you, to you? So what's the church to you? What's the church's purpose? What's it about? Why does it exist? The bride of Christ. Okay, the bride of Christ. You want so that's a scriptural image. What's that mean to you? We're special. Okay. Very special. All right. It also means we have a high, high, high standard to keep. Okay. All right. The church is, to me, is the, the sum of the energy of all of our souls. That when we come to the building, it's just a base that we can radiate out from. So the Holy Spirit comes into each of us and is radiated out through us. With So the church is kind of like a lens. Amen. What? Uh, the church to me is community where we can all gather together and worship as one. Amen. I think it's very important. Thanks. Well, she took my word. The church is a community, a community of believers, and those we are seeking to show the Lord to. There's a community of believers that gather to support each other and to worship and glorify God. Amen. The church is part of my personal commitment because it's very hard to be a Christian all by yourself. Okay, I agree. Um, I, I think that as well as personal devotions that you need to do all the time, you need to do corporate devotion, and that's what the church service is all about. Okay. Thanks, Charlotte. Others? For me, it represents a place where I can develop my relationship with Christ and God. Um, it's a place where I can sound off my understandings and help develop uh, a better understanding of that relationship. Yeah. Thanks, John. Rachel? Um, the church, and specifically Sunday mornings for me, are a way to um, kind of charge up for the week of going out and spreading goodness into the world that we can share from this place. Um, I think it's a great way. It, it's like a charge-up station in a weird way Okay. <laughs> for the week. <laughs> Another idea? Okay, good. I, I would just add it's a place for me to come and be broken. Okay. Be, you know, a broken person. Okay. The rest of the world, you have to be perfect, but here. Okay. I like it. All right. So these are all some really wonderful thoughts, and I appreciate all of them. Um, Barb, would you like to share the – oh, wait. I'm sorry. I, saw, I thought I saw a microphone, but it was a cup of coffee. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Barb, would you come and share the scripture with us? Good morning. When Paul comes up, I'll remember. Uh, today's scripture comes from Ephesians 2, uh, chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of God for the people of God. if these were part of Paul's uh, uh, sermon. <laughs> so, yeah, either way. We're just going to move the pool noodles out. Because, you know what, there's nothing worse than being distracted by pool noodles. <laughs> yeah, and here I thought I was getting my money's worth by being up here. So. So uh, as Pastor Joe said, I've spent the past year at Boston University School of Theology working on the first of three years 
of a Masters of Divinity program. I think more people than I realize hear Masters of Divinity and have no clue what that means or what it could be used for. Um, admittedly, some days I don't rightly know either. Uh, but in any case, an MDiv is a degree required by the Methodist Church uh, and many other denominations in order to be a pastor. Um, I don't know if that's exactly um, the direction I'm headed at this point, but regardless, I'm striving to make an intellectual home in theological studies. So back to the question. Um, the reason I chose the scripture I did and asked the question I did was because in some ways I spent the past year and will spend the next two plus years uh, studying what the church is and is not, uh, what it historically uh, could and could not have been, and uh, subjectively what it should and shouldn't be. Uh, each of the classes I took <coughs> had something to say about the church. So this morning, I'm hoping to both briefly walk you through my course here, um, excluding the couple hundred pages that I had to write and the couple thousand pages I was uh, supposed to have read, <laughs> um, as well as discuss what I believe uh, these courses were saying uh, about the church. So in both of my first two semesters, I took, for all intents and purposes, four classes. Um, the fall semester consisted of Introduction to the Hebrew Bible, Introduction to Christian Traditions, History of United Methodism, and a course called Practicing Justice. So Introduction to Hebrew Bible, as I imagine you might have guessed, uh, is the requisite Old Testament course. Hebrew Bible is just another name for the Christian Old Testament because it's the scripture that the Jewish <coughs> faith tradition uses. Uh, the approach of this course was to interpret themes and contexts of most of the books of the Old Testament individually, mostly in order, um, all while keeping an eye on the history and the development of Israel and its people as a nation and the Jewish faith. Um, as an introductory course, the material was very vast and varying. Uh, we learned anything from the documentary hypothesis of the Pentateuch, which states that the majority of the first five books of the Hebrew Bible were pieced together from four distinct sources, um, to anthropological facts like one of the first mentions of an actual Passover celebration occurs in a letter dated to 419 BCE, discovered on the island of Elephantine in Egypt in 1907. Whatever you want to do with that, you can. <laughs> um, so what can an Old Testament course tell us about the church? Well, um, I believe that it shows that the Christian church is founded on a long tradition, uh, one that isn't beyond question, but rather through investi uh, investigation can be rooted in history. The second course I mentioned, Introduction to Christian Traditions, covered the beginnings of Christianity in the ancient Roman world up through the Protestant Reformation of the 16th century. Uh, like Intro to Hebrew Bible, uh, this course sought to place the beginning of a faith, in this case Christianity in the church, within its many contexts. Philosophically, the discussions ranged anywhere from the metaphysics of Aristotle and Plato uh, to the patristics, the church, father, uh, church fathers like Irenaeus and Ignatius, to St. Augustine, St. Thomas Aquinas, and John Calvin. Um, historically, the course began with the time just after the death of Jesus and the beginnings of the church through Emperor Constantine, the first popes, and Christianity spread to China, England, and Germany. Um, a course on Christian tradition is more clear on what it says about the church. Christianity and the church is in itself a long and traceable history that, while sometimes shrouded in mystery and, and won by hegemonic forces, uh, we as responsible people can evaluate and confess this history as our own. Um, the third course that I took was History of United Methodism. Um, and this placed the doctrine and legacy of the United Methodism within the life and times of John and Charles Wesley and beyond. Uh, the beginning of this course focused on the historical context when jo in which John Wesley began his theological journey. Uh, born to Anglican parents in 18th century England, John began as an Anglican priest, but began to develop both personal and social aspects of pious living among his friends at Oxford University. Oxford is where United Methodism picked up its name Methodism because of how methodical John's faith practices were. As this course continued, we learned of John's theological development, such as his beliefs on sanctification and Christian perfection, or what he felt were requisite forms of social ministry, such as education and health. Finally, the course wrapped with how, United Method uh, how the United Methodist Church 
of the United States came to be. I can safely say that this course taught me that the Christian church is made of many different denominations, United Methodist, uh, United Methodism being one of those denominations, and the UMC reflects not only John Wesley's beliefs, but also many contextualized beliefs. Uh, the United Methodist Church is as widely varied as Christianity itself, um, which is neither good nor bad. The final course of my fall semester was called Practicing Justice. Its aim was to inspect social justice as it falls within the ministry of the church. That is, how has, how hasn't, and how can the Christian church respond to social justice issues through teachings and actions. This course was structured around key readings explaining how, from each author's perspective, the gospel of Jesus Christ and the church encounters issues like patriarchy and feminism, racism, or categorical violence. For example, one of the books we read was called Torture and Eucharist. It focused on the violent regime of General Augusto Pinochet of Chile and how the Chilean Catholic Church eventually confronted the violence through the Eucharist, the symbolic broken body of Jesus that brings people together in love and ultimate justice. Practicing justice taught that the church, um, through the message of Jesus that it bears, need necessarily be confrontational with the unjust powers of its day, seeking reconciliation and peace for all peoples. My spring courses featured two follow-up courses to the fall, uh, Introduction to New Testament and Christianity Engaging Modernity, as well as two electives, uh, Faith and Film uh, and Evangelizing Contemporary Cultures. Many of the themes of the first semester, like the idea of contextualized ministry or uh, contextualization of ideas, carry over into the second semester. Introduction to New Testament was similar to Intro to Old Testament in that the coursework investigated the themes and context of the New Testament books. However, since the New Testament is shorter in length and most students in the course were Christian, it was a bit more intensive. Uh, there was often a sense of challenge to conventionally held ideas and interpretations and many of the books we were able to discuss a bit more deeply um, than we were in the Old Testament course. So, uh, Intro to New Testament, from my perspective, taught that the Christian church is the sole bearer of the truthful living story of Jesus. And while some aspects of Jesus' life and early church may never be agreed upon, um, its job, the church's job, is to represent the gospel message in the world. Um, so just as Intro to New Testament aligned with Intro to Old Testament, um, Christianity Engaging Modernity aligns with Intro to Christian Traditions. This course picked up where Christian traditions left off in the Protestant Reformation with Martin Luther and John Calvin. Again, there was a focus on Christianity, both historically and philosophically. Um, as the Western European world entered into the modern era where rationalism, capitalism, and individualism replaced ancient ways of life, Christian thinkers developed new ways to think about faith and the church. Christianity engaging modernity ranged from reading philosophers like Kant and Hegel through systematic theologians like Karl Barth and Paul Tillich, and through other theologians like Jonathan Edwards and Martin Luther King Jr. This course uh, taught me that the church historically has been and still is a work in progress. Just as, a world history has not, just as world history has not stood still, the church can move with it either responsibly or simultaneously. Um, so, in this spring semester, I was uh, able to take a true elective uh, in a course called Faith in Film. So it was a, a course that I chose on my own volition to take. Um, as the title suggests, the course focused on how theology and film interact in cinema. Uh, the professor had written a book called Faith in Film in which he did a line through of the Apostles' Creed and how particular films portrayed some of the different lines um, of the creed. So for instance, the first week of the course uh, corresponded with I believe, and we watched the 90s film Contact. Uh, in the last week of the class, we viewed the Shawshank Redemption and discussed how it corresponded with the theme of the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. We also read scholarly books about film and theology and watched films that dealt with other themes such as monsters and social justice. I think we watched Pan's Labyrinth and Do the Right Thing by Spike Lee. So, um, so, what does this course tell us about the church? Well, ultimately the church, being part of the world and not separated from culture at all, 
is a filter through which Christians can interpret culture. And finally, uh, I had in my spring sem uh, the last course I had in my spring semester was called Inve Evangelizing Contemporary Cultures. Um, as with many of you, I was wa uh, wary at hearing the word evangelism. Um, you know, what would I be learning in a class about evangelism? How to win friends and then quickly lose them after trying to discuss Jesus with them? I mean, that's... <laughs> um, much to my relief, this course was about how the Christian church has historically gotten evangelism wrong by using ill-conceived means and how the practice of evangelism, if indeed it is valuable, can emerge from those ugly shadows. For instance, in reading a book called Missional Monastic Mainline by Elaine Heath and Larry Duggins, we learned about the formation of missional micro, micro communities, as well as the basis of uh, spreading the gospel through micro communities. Uh, we also read a book called Christianity Rediscovered, written by Vincent J. Donovan, uh, who is a Catholic missionary. And we learned about the importance of placing the gospel in a cultural context without ignoring the culture's merit. This course offered uh, a message about the church that is both important on its own, but it also frames all my previous statements about the church as well. Um, the Christian church, because of the message of Jesus Christ, is a community in which Christians see the world differently. And the gospel message, if it is as important as the Bible and history shows that it probably is, um, the uh, gospel message is worth living by uh, and sharing with the world. Um, so that's all I have for you this morning. Uh, thank you for letting me share my uh, past year's experience with you. Um, I know that you didn't have much of a choice about whether you'd like to hear me or not, um, <laughs> but it does mean a lot to me that I was able to um, to talk about some of these things after um, letting them ferment in my head for a while. So um, I also didn't see many of you walk out. Um, so <laughs> thank you for that. Um, if any of you would like to talk to me about any of what I said after the service or any of what I've learned after the service, please feel free to stop by. Um, so thank you, and happy Father's Day. Thanks, Don't go anywhere. From, stay here for a minute. So I just want to give thanks to God for you. Um, we, supported, uh, we supported Paul with a scholarship from our scholarship fund uh, this year, and, uh, and we're continuing to do that. That's great. I didn't know that, but that's <laughs> did you know that? Yeah. Okay, good. <coughs> as long as you knew that, that's good. But I, Paul, is a, as you can tell, is a great thinker and a great uh, student and um, has uh, a really big brain. <laughs> and, um, and I know that there's a lot that God is waiting to do through you. Um, so, uh, um, Mom, Dad, can you, can you come join us here for a minute? And um, is Morgan here or no? Is Morgan in the other room? Morgan's taking care of dogs somewhere. Yeah. yeah. All right. Just don't set yourself on fire. That would be bad. Come on. Um, let's, let's take a minute. Let's pray together for Paul. God, we give you thanks for all that you have done in Paul's life to bring him to this point. And we're grateful for what he's learning. We're grateful for the way that you're um, shaping his understanding of his vocation, of his life of what you're calling him to do. We know that there's much to be worked out and um, much more to be learned. But I just give you thanks for the way that he has um, been willing to engage these ideas, being been willing to engage this call, because it's easy to set it aside and say, um, Lord, you're not really speaking to me, are you? But we thank you that he's listened and that he is moving in the direction that you're calling him, even if the path isn't 100% clear. But we're grateful uh, just for the wisdom that's brought him to this place and grateful for your work in his life. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, stay here for a minute. So, um, you know, one of the things Paul, uh, at the end of the semester, uh, actually made the decision to make a transfer. He's going to be coming to Princeton, uh, which was one of the other schools that he considered as well. Uh, during his process. Uh, I know because I wrote all these re recommendation <laughs> letters for him. Um, 
<coughs> so he's going to be a little closer to home, which is going to give him a great opportunity uh, to be remain connected with us and also with our, uh, our former pastor, Jana Perkis Brash, who is in uh, Princeton at the United Methodist Church in Princeton. So we're really excited about that, and uh, I pray a blessing on you. And um, before you go, Debbie, um, like I said, Debbie's getting ready to go into a new appointment. And is Anna here this morning or no? No, she's preaching in Westmont. Oh, really? That's <laughs> funny. Um, Kathleen, can you come? And um, we want to say a blessing over you, Debbie, as you start into your new appointment. So come here. Let's, let's pray over you. So um, Debbie is a, great, is a great pastor and a great colleague and um, a daughter of this congregation. And um, really happy to have you with us here Thank today. You. And uh, God we'll bless you as you. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks for Debbie. We give you thanks for calling her into this ministry. And we give you thanks for um, just all the experiences that she's had in these churches that she's been working with and has been um, just loving and caring for and pastoring and leading with such grace and great love. And I know that it's hard for her to, to move on to a new place, but I'm grateful for this opportunity uh, for her um, to start something new, be in a place um, where she has an opportunity to make new connections, new relationships, where together they can learn and grow in their understanding of what it means to be the church. And God, I ask for your blessing on the Westmont Church as they receive her. I ask for your blessing on um, Debbie as she goes and joins and takes part there. And also for Dave, too, as he uh, follows her there. We uh, just pray and give thanks for all that they've done in this church and the churches they serve now and in uh, the Westmont Church and everything that you have in its future. God, we thank you in all things. Through Jesus, amen. God bless you, Debbie. See you. Bless us, Paul. Bless you, Dave. All right. So I think that we have a song, right? We have a song? So as we uh, move into our time, uh, uh, our time of prayer, we're going to have a song here, and we'll receive an offering. Uh, during this time. If you are visiting with us for the first time today, we want to say thank you so much for being here. You don't need to feel obligated to put anything on the plate. We're happy to have you with us and look forward to seeing you again. Let's continue now. We're offering God our gifts and our offerings and uh, singing together.
Um, as Pastor Kathleen gets ready to lead us in prayer, um, there's one particular concern I want to lift up uh, before you this week. Um, George lost his mom, and uh, Nancy Ballinger has been a really, really important part of this congregation for uh, a long time. And uh, Nancy is, uh, there's just, uh, it's really hard to describe uh, the contributions she's made in terms of raising up young people and teaching them the faith. Um, she's walked with other people as they've experienced cancer, having been a cancer survivor herself. Um, and throughout all of that experience, just had this tremendous ability uh, to trust that God was doing something good. So let's take a minute. Um, let's offer Thanksgiving for her life. Um, the services are going to take place next uh, Saturday at 10 o'clock here in the sanctuary uh, that will res receive friends uh, from 6 to 9 on Friday night and then from 9 to 10 on Saturday morning. And, um, yeah, let's pray together. <coughs> God, we give you great thanks for our friend, your servant, uh, beloved mom, uh, Nancy Ballinger. We're so incredibly grateful uh, just for her life and for everything that she's contributed to the life of this church, to the life of her family, uh, to her kids, to her grandkids, uh, to everybody who knew her. Um, Lord, we pray your blessing upon uh, George Sr. Um, we know that this is hard for him. It's hard for Debbie and for George and for their families. Uh, be with them, walk with them, encourage them. And walk with all of us as a congregation as um, we remember her and we give you thanks for her. Help us to remember uh, the way that Nancy lived and help us to take comfort and draw strength in knowing that she believed in the promise, the promise that you've given us of eternal life. We give you thanks for Nancy and we ask your blessing upon those who are missing her today. In Jesus' name, amen. One of the things that we are doing in the other two services is we are thanking all of our musicians. And so I wasn't here at the beginning, but if you guys haven't been thanked, we thank you for the hours and hours and hours that you put into being here and leading us in music. We love you. So that's being said. Are there other joys or concerns to share? We have a joy, and that is that uh, we think Owen is out of the f out of the woods. Uh -oh. We get a picture every day on cell phones, and uh, he's smiling. And the grand pop, that's the most important thing. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Amen. We give thanks for Owen. 
Kathleen, I'd like to ask for prayers for my father who's having um, quadruple bypass surgery on Wednesday. Wednesday. So, and travel mercies for me because I fly out tomorrow morning. His okay. name is Lou. Lou, Wednesday travel. Okay. We pray for you and for him and for all who love Lou. Um, I'd like to offer prayers up. A friend of ours, her uh, eight-year-old nephew had passed away due to a drowning in a backyard pool. And uh, his name was Christopher. So if we could send some prayers out to their family, I'm sure they're greatly needed right now. We pray for Christopher's family. and uh, I just want to ask for continued prayers for my grandson who's recovering from brain surgery. And his name again? Cole. Cole. Okay. We continue to pray for Cole as he recovers. I uh, just want to say uh, thank you again to everybody for all the support and everything with what's going on with my mother. But I do have a joy to lift up as well. Um, Noah is, uh, has left this morning. He went to Boys State at uh, Ryder College. Uh, he gets to spend uh, through today through Friday there and just just lift him up that he has a great experience um, and uh, so it's part of the reason why we're waiting until next week with my mom's service because I kn know she would have wanted him to be able to experience that in its entirety uh, so just lift him up as well for those of us that don't know about Boys State is this it's a sponsorship through the American Legion okay. uh, and and he's a delegate uh, for he's two delegates from his high school there's an a bunch of kids that go, but New Jersey is actually one of the um, uh, largest uh, Boys State programs uh, for the size of the state and the number of children. But uh, in in any case, it, it's a it's a neat opportunity. Um, he might get college credits for it, hopefully. Uh, so, uh, but it is a nice uh, a nice opportunity where they they talk about and they go over student govern or government and they do all kinds of different things, but it, it's, a, it's a neat, a neat opportunity. Well, we so. celebrate with your family that um, privilege that he has, and, and we pray for him while he's there. Yeah. Um, Kathleen, earlier this week, um, we lost a niece. Um, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law, Matt and Brittany, were 21 weeks pregnant, and the child is f now in heaven. So it's very difficult. It's actually the same day that Nancy passed. Mm -hmm. So to tell our kids they lost Mom and Ballinger and an unborn baby niece is a very, very difficult day for them. We'll be together today for a family, but we have not heard anything about services and whatnot, but um, just a difficult time. Chris, we pray for you and, and your family in this time. It's hard, very hard hard enough for adults but for for children it is much more challenging yes the nation has been through a lot as uh, this week as we all have been personally and um, and this community too um, mourns mourns a great another great young singer um, as well we know that that there are many who who are mourning her loss uh, Christina's loss so there's a lot of a lot of hurt on our hearts, but um, I prayed with the kids um, at, in Sunday school just now, and um, what I said was the promise of Jesus is that love never ends. Love never ends, and so even when our bodies can no longer sustain life, love lives on, and and that's the power of the cross. That's the power that we live by, um, and so. Nothing can stop that. I'll just add one more thing. Um, just uh, thought of this. Just lifting up fathers today. Mm, um, thank you. You know, a perfect or imperfect as they are, um, you know, they do their best. That's right. So That's right. We are human. We are all human. And, um, you know, f uh, fathers and, and those who have, there are many people who have been like fathers to us, too, as we've been trained up. Amen. Yes, absolutely. Every one of us plays a role in that but fathers are special let's pray loving God we don't know where to begin 
we just don't know where to start when our hearts are so heavy. But we give thanks, and that's the best place to begin. We give thanks to you for all the gifts that you have given us. The life that we have known, the lives that have trained us up, the lives that have gone on to be with you and all the saints in glory. We don't understand it. We know that it hurts and we understand that that pain that you have given us to feel is part of what it means to love. And if we didn't love so much, we wouldn't hurt so much. We pray for, for all those situations that have been named as well as we pray for the, the people of Orlando and and all the families that have been affected by the violence there. We pray for the communities around the world that are hurting because of injustice, because of senseless acts of violence, because of, of fear and hate that seems to just counter everything that we hold dear and that you have created us to be. And so we pray that, that we would become the people that you want us to be, and that even as we mourn the loss of our dear friends and family members, that we understand that the power you offer us is greater than any power that tries to take things away from us and, and tries to impact our lives in negative ways. We pray for so much in our lives, but we think too of those who, who don't have what we have, for those who have lost loved ones and don't have a faith family or close family members to, and friends to, to hang on to in these times. And we celebrate new life among us for the smiles of babies that continue to remind us that love and life goes on. That's how you've planned it, and we, we understand that part of it, and we embrace that part of it. With each new, with each ending, there is a new beginning, and we give you thanks for that. We give you thanks for the music ministries in this congregation. We give you thanks for all of those many, many volunteers that make this congregation what it is. We think of our children um, and the, the lives that we want for them and the foundation that we create for them. We offer this and so much more as we give you thanks for life and for love. In the name of Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray together, saying, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We've got five minutes of this. We're going to sing all 17 verses. Yeah, excellent. Perfect. And the Spanish language version? We're going to close with What a Wonderful World. So please join in. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me.
forth from this place with the love of Christ in your hearts. Go forth to carry that love into the world. In the name of Jesus Christ. 